This is Dr. Rich Blake uh, making a, a video for my a blog called Dr. Blake's Healing Soul. And uh, here I'm representing uh, 15 positive casts that have been corrected uh, 15 separate ways off the same left foot of one patient. So I, I took uh, the negative uh, cast uh, uh, suspension technique uh, on one patient 15 separate times and then uh, I corrected their uh, uh, mold uh, to represent various uh, corrections that, that, w that are fairly commonly asked for. Of the 15 probably Ten of these I use routinely. Five are little um, modifications that, that can be used. And I know doctors who use these techniques uh, routinely. So the, the first and, of course, primary, primary um, orthotic in podiatry is called the root balance orthotic. It's uh, uh, poured with the heel uh, vertical or straight up and down. Uh, it supports all three arches, the lateral arch, the metatarsal arch, and the medial arch uh, equally. And, and whatever tilts are in the foot are represented at, and supported within the uh, orthotic mold. Uh, and then, of course, plaster, uh, plastic I'm sorry, is heated up and pressed around this mold to make the orthotic device. The first modification of this is just what we call a, a maximum metatarsal support, the MMS support. So I, I took the same cor uh, correction uh, of a root balance technique and just added more metatarsal support for uh, a forefoot problem like a, a Morton's neuroma or a bunion or hammer toe uh, situation. Uh, so this is a c very common modification that I that I will use uh, on the orthotic device. The third type is uh, the classic, again, root balance technique, but uh, you see the words MCC. The MCC is medial column correction, which is uh, has many other names: navicular support, scaphoid support, uh, medial arch support. Um, so, and every lab has their own little technique on basically taking it and, and raising the arch as much as they possibly can, uh, to, uh, to, and also to make it comfortable for the patient. So this gives you perhaps a degree more support, uh, but especially for, for patients who have arch pain or have, uh, uh, heel pain where you want to transfer the weight into the arch, this is a, a good technique. Uh, the next version of this is is very common. Uh, Dr. Kevin Kirby out of Sacramento, California invented what we call the Kirby Skive, uh, which uh, can be used both on the medial side like in this uh, representation or on the uh, lateral side uh, as a lateral Kirby. Uh, but in this case, uh, the, a two degree Kirby skive, uh, it, it, it's uh, the medial uh, side of the contact point in the heel uh, is, is skived out uh, to give more support when you press the plastic. Uh, and, and this is when it's accompanied by a, uh, a medial column correction, you're going to get about three degrees more uh, support out of uh, an orthotic than just a straight root balance technique. Uh, uh, the next uh, is a uh, five degree inverted pour. This is very common. I, I first saw it through uh, KLM um, labs uh, down in the Los Angeles area. Uh, doing um, uh, five degree or up to even ten degree inverted 
uh, uh, pores, um, which is different than the inverted orthotic technique. Uh, so it's a straight uh, correction without arch fill, uh, and then you add a medial column correction, and, and you're going to get uh, six or so degrees of, of support. Uh, and this is really sort of your classic uh, runner's wedge, where you're going to get uh, some amount of varus support into the foot. Uh, the next one is also a five degree uh, inversion, um, and then you, you're going to add uh, the uh, medial column correction and the medial Kirby uh, to it. And this is a, another very common modification. My partner, Dr. Bill Olson, used to use this uh, routinely in his uh, uh, carbon graphite orthotics to get more varus support out of, out of, the, out of the foot. And you're going to get with, with the Kirby, I usually get about two degrees of, of correction, the medial column correction, I'll, I'll get another degree, and then you pour it five degrees. So you're going to get up to eight degrees, of, uh, and for runners who have a lot of uh, running limb varus, uh, these uh, last techniques are extremely uh, good. Um, the next one is is uh, a modification of that. This one is just poured at eight degrees, um, and it's typically used for uh, patients who have forefoot varus over uh, uh, t about ten degrees, and so you 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 pour them inverted, uh, and uh, you sort of ignore the forefoot varus. Uh, when you're supporting, you can still see there's, you know, there's four foot varus support in this. And then we added a medial column correction. Uh, here's your first sort of classic inverted orthotic. Uh, it's the lowest angle of it is, uh, is a 15 degree pour. And it's uh, with the inversion, if you pour something 15 degrees and you use the, uh, the arch, the classic arch fill, uh, you're going to get about three degrees, so it's a five to one relationship. Um, but on this case, uh, because the patient had both medial and lateral instability, uh, I added both a medial uh, or a lateral column correction, which is a lateral rounding of the uh, the midfoot, and a lateral Kirby. So this actually sort of balanced itself out, and we're really uh, trying to hold the the foot a very neutral, uh, not inverted, not everted, and and the, the two sort of complement each other. Uh, here's um, probably the highest modified uh, uh, root orthotic where you you're you're pouring it 10 degrees inverted, and uh, you're going to use this in a four foot varus over over 10 degrees. Um, and then you're going to add the medial column correction and medial Kirby uh, to give you uh, greater support. So this, this is going to give you uh, 10 uh, to up to probably uh, 13 degrees of support at times. And, and for activities like running, uh, a runner can have 20 degrees of pronation uh, at heel contact. So these, these techniques are extremely good for that period. Here's uh, really uh, the classic starting point of the inverted orthotic technique. It's a three degree pour, uh, I'm sorry, a 15 degree pour, which gives you about three degrees of varus support. Uh, this is the, uh, the next one, which is a 25 degree, uh, which I is sort of my default orthotic. I, I actually start thinking about orthotic devices based on this when I see uh, moderate to severe pronation. I say, okay, well, what would a 25 degree orthotic device give me, which is typically uh, about five degree correction. And then from that point, I uh, go ahead and, and uh, try to decide if I, I want to go higher than that. Um, if you go with a 15 degree, which a lot of labs prefer, uh, to go with a 15 degree because it's it's easier to do for a lab um, 
than the than the higher inversions. So and and with the CAD CAM systems now being invented, uh, this this seems like a a good uh, technique. So you'll get three degrees with the 15 degrees, and you'll get two with the Kirby and one with the medial column correction. So this gives you a six degree varus wedge, uh, which uh, can be very helpful. Um, this is my highest starting point on uh, uh, the inverted orthotic technique. So if a, a child comes in with severe flat foot or uh, an adult with uh, posterior tib dysfunction or just severe pronation, uh, I'll start with this, which gives me a seven degree correction. So 35 divided by five is our seven degree correction. And, and with this, um, uh, it's, it's a very comfortable orthotic. Uh, the, uh, again, with your inverted orthotic technique nowadays, I do not have to use the plantar fascial groove because of the, um, uh, the, the flexible polypropylenes that we use now. And uh, I, I can always grind out a groove if necessary along the way. Uh, we're, we're down to the last three, so here's an inverted orthotic device of 25 degrees, uh, which will give you 5 degrees of correction, and then you add the Kirby, uh, the medial Kirby and the, and the medial column correction, and you're going to end up with a device that corrects for about 8 degrees of pronation. So if you measure the resting calcaneal stance position, uh, a lot of labs will, will like to go with the if, if they can use a Kirby and a medial column correction, they'll, they will like to uh, under-invert, uh, and, and that's a reasonable thing to do. It's, however, the medial column corrections can be uncomfortable. I love them with high arch feet, because uh, I don't think we ever support high arch feet enough. Uh, but that being said, um, you know, with the lower arch feet love the more natural uh, inversion that's produced with 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 a straight inverted orthotic technique. Uh, the the this one, um, which I guess is, I'm sorry is my last one. This is this is one of the really the highest that I I go uh, when I'm talking about inversion of the foot. Uh, it it's it is. Putting a lot of force, about 10 degree force. You're putting a 35 uh, degree inversion, uh, which is about seven degree correction, and then you add the Kirby and the medial column correction, and you're going to be uh, quite inverted. If I take this and tilt it, uh, you can see that the device is uh, tilted on itself and uh, you're going to get a, quite a bit of, of correction on that foot. Here's, again, my, the highest correction, which is just a straight uh, in, inverted orthotic technique, and uh, it, it's a lot of force that's being generated on the medial side. So I, I hope this helps uh, you understand that if your practitioner is trying to correct for pronation, uh, that uh, he or she has a lot of options uh, in designing a comfortable. They look at your your foot type, how how high your arch is, how how pronated you are, um, and you know whether you need any lateral support. Um, I always use very deep heel cups. I have sort of standards that throughout my blog. I have uh, a lot of other uh, information on the inverted orthotic technique. So I, I, I hope uh, this little summary uh, of these uh, 15 uh, techniques have been uh, helpful uh, in some way. Uh, thank you and, and have a wonderful day.